back everybody to the round four finals here. We do have SK Telecom versus KT. We are about to go into game number six. Zest taking out Classic in that last one leaves SK Telecom with only one more choice. It's going to have to be Innovation as the final player, no doubt. Any other choice would be a mistake, I feel. Innovation will have to defeat the Kingslayer Zest. And then the final player of KT, which will most likely be Flash. Now, he did beat Flash in the TBT in GSL mm. just two days ago. Yeah. But can he beat Zest? Well, that final map, if it gets to it, will be on Coda as well. So that's another thing to consider. But there he is, Innovation, no surprise. The ace player of SKT these days. Has a lot of wins against Protoss in Pro League, but to be honest, a lot of those wins I remember were against people like Creator. Not the most, you know, highest level. I'm sure like a couple of them were. But. Yeah. Loves to pull the boys. Yeah. One of those terrain plays that still does it these days. It's a rarity. But uh, he loves his mind drops and he loves pulling the boys. There you go. That's his TVP. We figured in a him out. I figured him out a long time ago. <laughs> yep. That's He's, the program that runs in his brain. Exactly. We've been watching this program executed many, many times. In fact, seven times this season, six times out of seven, it succeeded. Zest of the seven and four record versus Taron. I feel like most people would favor innovation going into this, but you know, Zest definitely could try to throw a wrench into that program, try to mess up what Innovation is doing. And the meta has changed quite a bit since Innovation's successes in this matchup. I'm actually favoring Zest into this one. He's got a massive motivation, or momentum, rather, behind him. And uh, on this map, he's definitely come out here a lot of times. I feel like he'll be very comfortable here, whereas maybe Innovation, uh, not so much against a Protoss. But we'll see. All right, guys, this is such an important moment now. Can KT steal another important win versus SKT? The last time they faced each other in such an important match was in the Grand Finals last season. Well, let's jump into game number six right now. Innovation versus Zest on Echo. Down here in the bottom right, in the orange, from SK Telecom T1, the last hope. It is Innovation. And his opponent to the top left on match point is Zest for KT Rolls for the Kingslayer. Once all killing SKT alone. Ooh, that's a cool KT there. Why, yeah. Gotta wear those sunglasses in here. It does get pretty bright, especially mm. when a star like Zest is shining. Most likely, <laughs> most nice. likely just got recently uh, surgery for her eyes <laughs> at the nearby Definitely. Oh, you know, it's actually basic clinic. <laughs> it's a cooler way than, uh, you know, shielding your face from the camera is just wear sunglasses, right? I guess that's, that's actually true. really true. The what if that became popular and everybody started wearing sunglasses in Korean studios? I would like that more, I think. It'd get really cool in here. Yeah. Zest. The modern gladiator. Very well said. Chisel toss, in my opinion. Um, well, I just want to see if that happens, if, if the crowd meta shifts so everyone wears glasses. <laughs> the crowd meta. I want to see I someone. Think I, I, think I, I think she just started that. Yeah. The evolution yeah. of the crowd just meta. Just everyone write beginning. that down. Put that on Liquipedia so that we know who started the movement. Um, <laughs> I want to see someone wear the LeVar Burton, like, Star Trek sort of visor <laughs> to, oh, to change things even further. That uniqueness nice. level. Maybe but in some of those uh, Kart Raider leagues, you got some crazy stuff going on there in some of those commercials we were watching. Let's uh, let's take a look at this build, though. It's going to be a CC first here for Innovation versus Zest's more standard popular opening. Even going to make a pile on low ground here just to see any sort of move out. So going to find out if he's getting eBay blocked or not very early on. And, you know, Innovation is just simply going to get away with this because Zest is not moving out whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... I mean, you can counter it, you can like rush out units to harass it, but it very rarely do we see these CC first get punished these days. It's such a norm of the build orders in the meta. It usually gets up, and it's it's kind of the interesting thing to look at is how many barracks are made after that command center. Is it going to be one? Is it going to be multiple? Looks like it's going to be multiple this time, so he is going to be playing safe to start things off. Question is, does he add a third one? I don't think he will. 
It's not really innovation style. More like something TY would do, as we saw already uh, in the semis. Okay, SV's just going to sneak in here. I'm just waltzing on in as if he owns the place. Uh, is going to eventually see this Nexus coming down. Should be able to tell from the build. Zess looked Perp. even, uh, sorry to cut you off, like scared he was in a gas deal or something. He put his probe on that second assimilator really fast. Yeah, that's, it's pretty important to make sure that doesn't happen, right? Because he added it dir like directly off to that. And then he wants to start to get, it, to get his tech out right off to that Nexus. Maybe See, probe on the map as well. Maybe that probe just really likes that uh, gas location. He like went right back to it again. He's yeah. like looking at it really closely. <laughs> Not very efficient, but you know, if he loves it, can't really stop him. This is going to be two gases as the follow-up. Only two barracks being made here. All right, so he's going to have sufficient marines to kind of defend against most things. I don't think we're going to see too much aggression from Zest. I wouldn't be surprised if he did play for the later game. Now, there's that Twilight cancel to start things off, but that's never a, you know, a full indicator of hyper-aggressive play. It's usually a defensive sort of opening there. You get blink out, stop any sort of drops, and then go into that robo shortly after. I have to agree. It's going to be more of a show the stalkers. Maybe force some bunkers, get the robo and a third base quickly. And uh, Innovation obviously would like to scout this, would like to know about this. Um, Zest not the type of player to go DTs or even for DT drops either. This looks like it's going to be more of a CJ Hero type PVT opening. Yeah, should be Mothership Cora coming in here. Maybe snipe an SCV if it doesn't get micro. Oh, still going to be running in the front too. Going to be delaying this bunker perhaps. Three more shots. Two more shots. One more shot. Oh, that's oh, really wow. cool Whoa. actually. Oh my god, that's on 5 HP to go. He could actually get some damage here to bring some Mothership Core back. Yeah, he's going to be Creating a little bit of havoc here. Yeah, Marine. Free Marine. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. He's going down. If spotted. That's two Marines now total. Or is it? All right. Well, we are seeing Stim <laughs> on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend that never happened. <laughs> Factory as well. So, uh, yeah. Marine's like, ahem. <laughs> <laughs> no third CC. Something to note going into this as well. Mm. Uh, so, not hyper greed from innovation just yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna get <laughs> zapped. That's, That's the Brendan probe right there. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Valdez probe, I got man. Him, guys. <laughs> it's really okay. like the worst way to go as well. Yeah, to get zapped. Yeah. You have a heart attack and die. That's horrible, Brendan. I mean, he was on weak health, so. How was I supposed <laughs> to know, right? Like, <laughs> I can't see his health, I'm a pro. <laughs> All right, so it essentially is that CJ hero opening, you know, blink into Robo. Faster third base than usual, and the one thing that's very different than CJ hero is he isn't overcommitting to, uh, you know, a forge at the same time, which is usually something we see with a double forge and super upgrades. Yeah, I, I kind of like it for the map. You know, the third base is going to be much easier to defend, especially if you get those uh, uh, rocks down. If you get that rock tower and, um, you know, just essentially defend in between your two bases. And then, you know, maybe get the later upgrades at a, a later double forge if you want to go into that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we have seen sometimes players fall into, uh, for example, parting in the GSL group that we saw uh, on Friday is when you go for a build like this with Blink and you pressure, you do get Forges very late. And, I mean, obviously Parting played a slightly different style to this, but already Innovation's going to have plus one. He might actually have one one before Zest has any upgrades, and that allows him to do a lot of strong pushes, and pressure is going to be kind of nullified by that. He also has a great SCV count. There's only two SCVs behind plus wheels with that CC first that he chose. Mm, look at this double. Medivac about to come out as well. Everything's all lining up for it to be a pretty effective double drop. And these Stalkers better be in place for it or they're going to have some trouble defending all three bases. Does see the Medivacs pop out, so I'm sure he's like, okay, got to go back. They, he also saw the stim as well, I believe, so he's going to be like, okay, I can't stay out here on the map too long. Seeing our first forge go down as well. Most likely just going to be that armor upgrade. I don't know like, where that forge is, by the way. It's like at the front of the natural. Whoa. Very snipeable. Yeah, that's one of the most important things for a Protoss, especially one who's already behind in upgrades. Look at that, the armor already on the way for Innovation, as well as a second Starport. When you see Innovation get this much economy very quickly and get two Starports up like this, usually he's doing that pull the boys type uh, in the Lazy Boy push with the SCVs. Um, and he has an upgrade lead. 
And he's going to actually, he really wants to get in here and find something. He's even free stemming here. He's not going to get in before the cooling tower goes down. This is like a really aggressive version of that as well, because there's no third base to it. There's no third CC. It's two base. He's looking for aggression here. Slow down, do damage, maybe trade out for this Colossus. Oh. Time Warp comes down here, and some pretty decent force fields as well is going to push this back. This kind of push really not getting any damage done. Yeah, look at that. We are going to see two starports with reactors be pumping out Vikings in just a moment's time. So he certainly should be looking for that kind of engagement. Maybe uh, it's all going to line up once his armor is finished up. Now, you know, we make a lot of, uh, you know, jokes almost or, or even pokes innovations play off and calling him the robot. But he, we can even tell, like, we can see the future right now in his play, in his builds, because he plays like this so much. And I think that Zest has also seen this future as well. He's like, okay, no third base. And what's going to happen here if Innovation realizes that he cannot break with an SAV pull Zest's third base is we're probably going to see him really, the, the program break down. And that's what I'm really concerned about because he needs this win. SKT needs to win that seventh game. And if he can't find this, if he can't make this work, yeah. KT's going to take this win. This is a really tense moment. He's significantly behind in this game. And I'm not sure if he's going to have that window. He's going to have one big attack, one big shot to it. And, you know, we do say it's not really make, even making fun when we say he's a robot. It's just mm. so he's so efficient and crisp with his builds. His macro is out of control. It's like one of the reasons, you know, it, it's it's a program that runs essentially the same way every time, right? Because it's so crisp. Look at this. Double drop in the back. Nothing really in place. They're coming up now. We're done over charge. Going to knock that one out, push it back. More and more Vikings coming across the map as well. It's going to be a hard defense for Zest. This kind of map lead uh, makes it so because you kind of have to sit between your natural and third base in a pretty awkward place to be. The cooling tower debris is gone as well, so he can attack from multiple angles. He could go into the third base from the left side or try to go in between the bases or split his units to do both if Zest kind of gets caught into that third. Zest's positioning is going to be so important here. He would like to delay this until charge because he has, you know, a decent zealot count. He's building that up right now. Here comes that attack. He's going with two angles here. Good blink back. There's not enough Vikings for this many Colossus as well. It's four Colossus mm. to ten Vikings right now, but two of them are across the map. There's also a really nice just squad of Stalkers. And Zess is always on top of getting his Stalkers right under underneath the Vikings and making sure that his Colossi aren't just getting... Uh, you know, pot-shotted by those Vikings. Mm. They are going to take damage. There's five Colossi now and 16 Zealots. And oh. charge is nearly done. That's the most important upgrade right now. 13 seconds to go. Here we go. Po boys have been pulled. He's looking for that big fight here. Zest charge. knows it. Oh, look at, look at that. More Zealots coming in. And already way too much damage being done. The Colossi have to pull back. Or rather, the Vikings have to pull back. Excuse me. Mm. And the Colossi all alive. And big thing to note as well, he actually engaged before the boys were in place. So he actually got a lot of damage done on that bio. Yeah. Before anything could be tanked. There's about five cannons at the natural as well. Zest really bunkering down here. Four. Just, wow. you know, accepting the push. He's just expecting it so much. This is so intelligent from Zest. Even if he lets his third base go. Look at him. He's only leaving Stalkers at the front so he can deal with those Vikings. The cannon's going to help out as well. Probe's coming off the line. He's going to take this fight. The Colossi bunching up quite a bit. The Zealots at the front. Not able to get a lot of surface here. But this is just, it looks like too much Protoss here at the end of the day. So many Colossi in the back, and all of the Terran units being bunched up. Some really nice force fields to push them together. And now that will push him back. Yep, now he's down in Harvesters. The third base survives a few more kills there by some Marines. Good splitting here on this army, but he's not Morrow, and even Morrow couldn't make this work. He's going to blink forward now, wipe out the rest of these bio units. And just oh. hands off the keyboard. He's got it. He's going to win this one for KT. A really stellar defense here from Zest. Not the best push from Innovation, I do have to say. Yeah, read like a book, which is really what it comes down to. Zest had everything in place. That wall of cannons as well on that natural. Just he had everything in place. He completely expected to stop from Innovation. GG! KT Rolster takes it. Zest, the key player here. It turned out to be true. The key player of round four and the key player of the round four finals, especially coming through for this final, getting those three kills. He went 7-0 and over the course of this last round, and this is just the perfect finish to the round four playoffs, I really have to say. That it is a 4-2 final score, a bit of an upset here. And I have to say, uh, you know, Zest, Looking really good, but classic and innovation both not pulling their weight. The weak links in yeah. this series that essentially caused this loss. I feel like classic's play was not the best, and the innovation's play was insanely predictable.
Yeah, very disappointing game from Innovation there. I would have liked to see him take it late game instead of just going for a pretty obvious two base timing. That, I mean, it, it was clearly so obvious to Zest that he had a wall of cannons ready. He knew where his army had to be, how to defend against it, and it was it was a sad showing indeed. Oh, that is going to do it here. Zest getting that final win. Will, I believe, give enough points to KT for them to get third place here before the Grand Finals, Grand Final Playoffs. Yeah, I mean, just uh, one of those, another pride thing here, but KT has proven with this win that at this moment in time, they are the best team in the world, and guess what? They won last season as well. So this is now SKT went into this insanely confident. They even started with Billowy today going into this series. Now going into the Grand Finals, if KT comes up to meet them, which most people would expect based on their performance here, they might have some problems, and they got to really sit down and prepare for this team because in the finals they won last time, and they could repeat that performance here. Seems like SKT, you know, they, they were so strong over the entirety of this Pro League season, but sometimes, especially against KT, they just can't seem to make it work. Yeah, I feel like they won't be starting with Billowy again. It, he got the job done by defeating Stats, but there's no, like, bonus games to be ha uh, won need, with Billowy yeah, as well. You need someone that's going to have at least a chance of getting more than one game, for yeah. sure. Well, there's a look at the, the match result of today with Billowy Dude taking that first game, the TY coming back. Threatening to like at least get a couple wins here, but Sue somehow made it work on Cactus Valley. And then Zest is cleaning up everyone else. Yep, Sue Classic and Innovation go down to the King Slayer. Again, I want to talk about this point briefly because we talked about this at the very beginning, but I feel like SKT is weak in this format because in the other formats, they have so many good players that, like, no matter what, you, each player only gets to be used once except in ace matches. But in this format, someone like Zest can just kill three of your players if he's better than them on that day. So they do insanely well in the round robin, but when it comes to all kill format, they're just sometimes not as strong. I still think that SKT heavily favored to win this whole thing. If they do bring out the right players at the right time, I'm no doubt they, they do not want to repeat of last year. So let's talk about our matches, though, going into grand postseason. We're here. It's real. First match is going to be KT Rolster versus JNR Green Wings. Yeah, and that's going to take place over the course of three days, guys. So each day is essentially one match, and they have to win two out of three in order to move on to the next one. So, it's so sick. I actually love this format so much. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. And then, of course, you guys see the dates. It is going to be the next week, week after that, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 29th, 30th, and the 1st of October. TJ will go up against whoever wins that first match. Oh, man, it's such a, such a big event. I, I do love these, this post-playoff season. And yeah, I can't wait to see what these teams have got to offer, but it's no doubt going to be the best games of the year. And the Grand Finals, of course, will be after that. CJ versus that match one winner on the 3rd of October. Or actually, no, it's been moved to the mm. 10th, it looks like. So wow. push back a week. And that could always be a good sign that there's a sick venue coming mm. up. If they moved it for some reason, that could be one of the big reasons. Could be. Yeah. Hasn't been announced just yet. I gotta, I gotta, you guys will have to wait and see. Prediction that it's going to be on the Han River once again. <laughs> just saying. Is that your prediction? That's my prediction. Speaking of venues, at Soul Children's Grand Park's Outdoor Concert Hall on the 20th, that's one week from today, they're going to have the CJ Team Kill Finals, Biel versus Hero. And it's going to be at 5.30 p.m. So if you are in Korea, do come to one of our only recent in like the last year and a half to two years offline outdoor StarCraft II finals. It should be a really fun one. Even though it's a team kill, both these guys are looking for their big win here in Korea. And I don't think there's going to be any boss hole. They're, they're just going to go at it full on. And it should be a lot of fun. A lot of interesting mind games, no doubt. They know each other so well. They practice with each other all the time. It could be some yeah. crazy, crazy games. There was also a fun rivalry going on early on in this uh, season of Pro League where they were uh, at the same number of wins. And I think it was Hero, or maybe Bill. One of them in an interview was like, oh, I want to